ways in which there may in which there may only be um, one polling location that y'all essentially locate for the early voting period, go to another part of the district to provide um, to provide um, um, further coverage of the district. That could be another typical polling place. Um, it could be um, another location altogether. Again, there are details about what y'all have done in the past that I don't have, but um, I understand there's been some flexibility and that the city should um, take advantage of that flexibility during the early voting period. Um, okay, so that's the early voting um, recommendation. The um, recommend or the report about the um, about um, polling places for election day. Um, I started from ground zero um, and tried to um, think about the issue um, from first principles, um, both that helped to inform the um, the commission, but also um, the citizens of Lowell. Um, it seems to me that there are four major criteria that um, any locality um, wants to consider in considering polling places. Um, those are access and distance. How close are the polling places? Um, how easy is it to get to them? Secondly, clarity to voters. Um, you know, voters are, are creatures of habit. And so to the degree that we can adopt or use polling places that have been used in the past, that would be a good thing. The third is simplicity of administration, which is something I think that the public um, oftentimes overlooks, um, but is a really critical one. Um, we see, you know, we the public see a lot of what's going on when we see where the polling places are, but what we don't see is what's going on behind the scenes. And so, um, and, and in order to prepare for election day, there, uh, there's going to have to be a lot of attention to details and getting notifications to voters and making sure the voting lists particularly are, are done um, properly and correctly. Um, and the simpler um, the preparation is, um, the less likely um, mistakes will be made and the less likely that um, um, work will be done right up against deadlines. And so, um, so the simplicity of administration is something um, to be considered as well. Simplicity of administration in the polling places um, as um, poll workers have to not only deal with people who properly belong in precincts, but the more complicated schemes um, that get developed, the more likely it is that a voter may end up in the wrong precinct, in which case that's something that has to be managed. So simplicity for administration. And then finally, the capacity of the facilities. And I, I would say there are two things here. One, just can the, you know, the facilities handle the crowds? And I don't think there's any issues here in any of the discussion that's been raised. The second is particularly the supply of poll pads and the ability to handle, um, basically handle the traffic um, just in terms of a customer service, um, trying to keep um, lines to a minimum perspective. So those are the four considerations um, that I delineate and I try to, um, try to assess all the options from the perspective of those four considerations. Some are measurable directly, others are more qualitative in assessment, but I think these are four things we need to keep in mind. There are two constraints on this allocation decision. One I make explicit and another one's implicit, but I, I, I wanna call them both out because um, they are, they're just important um, constraints. One is the number of poll pads. And as I understand right now, the, the city has arranged um, to have 36 poll pads available for election day. That may or may not be a hard constraint. Um, and um, I understand whether it could be lifted um, is um, probably up to the city manager. Um, um, and so, so it could potentially in theory be lifted I have treated um, that limit as a hard constraint because that's the resource that the city has at the moment, it's 36, 36 poll pads. Um, we want to allocate at least two to every um, polling place. Um, and that is um, both to keep the lines moving, but also if one of the poll pads um, goes offline, you have a problem with it, you have another one that can be, that can be um, used. Um, and so it's really important to have two poll pads everywhere. Um, 
It's also important to have three or four pole pads in reserve in case um, something goes down and can't be revived. Um, it's important to, to have that, that sort of flexibility. So in essence, um, given the 36 um, that the city could allocate um, safely 32 to 33 pole pads around, um, around the city on election day as things stand right now. Um, the second constraint is just the current precincts. And, um, you know, I think there's some, there, there may be some hope um, that one could just kind of carve up the districts without regard to the precincts um, and just send people to the closest um, polling places. But that's practically not available to the city at this point, given the deadlines um, that we're up against. And also, again, given um, the fact that um, the assignment of voters to precincts, by which I mean not only just the physical assignment, but getting that into the various databases, sending out um, announcements, getting the poll lists um, properly prepared, that has to happen flawlessly. Um, and so that to redraw, essentially redraw precincts at this point, um, I think would put um, at, at peril an accurate, um, accurately run election. So we're, we're constrained by the uh, assigning people in um, two polling places based on the precincts in which they live. Um, so having said that, um, um, I'll make it just a couple of points about the decisions that have been made and decisions that might might be made. Um, at the last meeting, um, there was um, um, there were votes taken. Um, essentially, I'll just describe it as two polling places for the largest districts um, plus District Four. Um, the um, the analysis in the report, which is um, referred to as um, splitting, um, splitting um, the um, districts in, in two. Um, that's associated with that, um, that plan. Um, allowing for two polling places in most of the districts, as was decided last week, requires the deployment of 35 um, poll pads on election day. Um, and so without the addition of poll pads available to the city, um, um, the city runs the risk of not being able to respond in a timely fashion if something goes wrong with those deployed poll pads. Um, so in theory, you could do it with the resources you have, but you run the risk of, um, of something going wrong and one precinct, maybe two, developing long lines because of the in inability to, um, um, to get replacement poll pads in place. Um, so, so that's the first point is that the decision um, does run kind of bump up against the constraint. Um, and so if the commission um, wants to reconsider the, the decision made from last week, I, it seems to me that there are three districts where it bears rethinking whether there's a second polling place on election day and again, whether concerns about proximity can be dealt with um, during the early voting period. The first one, which I explicitly direct, um, um, talk about in the, you know, in the report and include, include a map is um, District 5, where there's been exploration of using a Lowell Housing Authority facility, um, I believe on Chelmsford Street. And um, if I can just, Let's see if I can quickly share my um, share the screen and um, just show real quickly. Come down to the little map that I prepared and make this larger. Ah, I apologize. But this is from the report, and this is an extract of of. District five, which is the orange district here. And the issue is that the um, LHA facility is right where my cursor is, which is on the boundary of the, of the, um, of the district. Um, the plan would be with, with LHA, um, I would assume that these districts, uh, these precincts, voters in these precincts, um, eight to, 
Um, this is 10, one, um, four, three, and that little snippet, if there's anybody in there and, and um, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry, in, in, in 10, one would um, go to the LHA facility. Now, the issue with that is that um, most voters who live in Ward 101 actually live closer to Butler, who live, live closer to Butler. And in fact, that is the polling place that voters in Ward 101, that voters in um, Ward 101 were um, assigned to, for instance, in the presidential election. So by, um, um, so if we were to have the LHA facility, which is in 10, 10 1, and, and um, assign voters from that, that precinct plus the other two that are, you know, four, three, and eight, two, then we first of all end up sending a lot of vote, a lot of voters um, to a polling place that's further away from them. Um, and therefore, the proximity issues really are not well addressed. Um, by um, adding that second facility. So Butler, Butler is basically in the middle of the precinct, I'm mean, rather middle of the district. Um, and so adding one on the periphery. Now, again, if we could, you know, in, in the best of all possible worlds, um, and in fact, you know, when y'all do re-precinct it, you know, you might very well put a polling place over there because that, um, you know, that might be an appropriate facility um, under different circumstances, but right now, um, I wonder about I wonder about that one. So that's the most difficult um, one to consider, or, or the one where um, it's not clear that um, what y'all get by having um, um, in terms of proximity, and then keeping in mind that two polling places, you know, two poll pads are are, are, are at least two poll pads, and I, I don't have my report actually in front of me. And maybe more poll pads are, are assigned there. That's something that immediately bumps you up against, um, you know, that constraint. The other two, um, the other two districts are actually districts that would be in the preliminary. They're not as extreme as I think the District Five um, situation, but um, it actually uh, kind of creates similar situations in which the lumpiness of the precincts limits the degree to which putting a second polling place gains you proximity to voters. Um, and so actually, let, why don't I share my screen with the, um, with the map. And so let's first of all think about, oops. I'm going to... I apologize, my um, being on vacation, I'm, okay. So if we go to three, um, the, the most centrally located um, um, polling place um, was R the Riley School over here. And the proposal is um, also to add Immaculate Conception um, as a polling place. Um, this is um, it's a similar issue to the one I just discussed, discussed with um, District 5, not as severe. Um, but it turns out that basically I'm going to draw, actually, let's see here, I can draw a line. And this is going to be approximate, but you can see this line that I'm drawing. Um, basically, everybody to the right of the line is closer to Riley, and everybody to the left of the line is um, close closer to Immaculate Conception. It turns out if you look at which I've done, you know the the actual locations of um, the, you know where where residences are. Voters in Ward One and One One are obviously much closer. Um, 
But actually, the voters in 11-3 and those few in 11-2, most of them are, end up being further away from Immaculate Conception than to Riley. So you do get, you know, because almost everybody in 1-1 one, one lives closer to Immaculate Conception, and then, but large numbers in these other precincts um, that would go to Immaculate Conception live closer to Riley. You get limited, um, limited help again um, by choosing a polling place that's on the on the periphery um, of the district. Um, the and I'm going to get this wrong. I always do, and I apologize if it's the Penn School or the Pine School. Um, um, it's also in the periphery um, of, of the precinct um, of the district. And I believe that when we, um, we met informally to kind of talk about facilities in this district, that right at you know, basically the really middle of the district um, is either um, small commercial or residential and doesn't have facilities that are appropriate for a polling place. So this is, this is a tough district in terms of proximity um, and adding a second polling place. Not as bad as five, but, but still tough. Um, and then we have district two. Um, and let's see if I can get us up there. And I'm gonna have to figure out how I stop Drawing lines. Okay, um, so District Two is up here. Um, that. So District Two is up here. The um, proposal was the Robinson School um, with um, first Robinson and then adding Green Green Halls. Um, again, this is kind of a similar issue where um, um, you do get. Um, a couple of the precincts, voters from a couple of the precincts um, um, closer to Green Hall, but a lot of voters in um, actually in 9-1 where Green Hall is, is located, um, live closer to Robinson. Um, so um, all these things considered, um, and, and the report goes into more detail um, than I've been able to go into here, but all things considered, that is, you know, the constraints about um, po um, about poll pads, the number of voters who might be in particular polling places. Um, I, I proposed a, a plan that would have only um, a single um, polling place in districts five, three, and two. Um, again, where I think five is the one that's the most serious one um, to consider. So that's, um, I mean, that's the summary of, um, of my report, and um, I'd be um, delighted to talk about it um, with the commissioners and the staff. Well, Professor Stewart, thank you for that. Um, thorough um, synopsis of the polling places. Um, we appreciate your time and the effort and everything that you've um, just given us in terms of the information. Um, one question that keeps like coming in my mind or just continues to um, it just, I, I just keep thinking about it um, understanding the logistics and understanding that um, probably um, reducing the polling location is again easier and um, with the thorough analysis probably more beneficial um, to do so but it comes back to um, what we can do rather than what we can't do and I know that we're approaching this with a can-do attitude um, because um, for me, um, and from what I've heard um, from a lot of different folks, um, the the um, the number of polling places matter. So um, even if there's just a few hundred or 
you know, people that go to a specific polling place. And like, again, you, you indicated people are creature of habits. If they're used to going to that polling place, they're used to going to that polling place. So messaging and given again, our time constraint, um, messaging is, is very important, but it also could be lost in translation. If someone is used to going to the Green Ouch School and they live closer to the Robinson, for years they've been going to the Green Ouch School they're still gonna to go to the Green Ouch School first, even though they live closer to the Robinson School. So um, I guess my, my question to you is, given the poll pads restriction, I guess we have exactly enough and we do not, I, you know, I'm not sure if we're able to get the additionals in the, um, in the process or in time. Is this, is this election at all compromised if we continue, if we do um, split the split the districts with 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 additional polling locations, is it is do you foresee it really being compromised? Like, or can we have a fair election that is um, that is doable? Right. Now, those are those are good questions, and um, I'll. Um, um, I'm here. Address it in a couple of ways. One, I mean, you ask, is it possible to have a fair, a fair election? And I think absolutely it is. Um, I think that, um, again, to go back to my, um, go back to my um, opening remarks, I think what the city is faced with is running this election um, as, as, you know, as well, um, and with as much um, integrity and legitimacy, safety, um, access, and all those things as it can, given the constraints that it has. Um, and one of those constraints is the precincts that y'all are that you already have. In another um, world, um, you know, the Census Bureau would have um, already have announced their population numbers and the city could have redrawn precincts and you could have been in a position um, to you know, allocate people around the city more effectively, but you don't have that. And so this, this yes, I mean, I mean, my experience with the commission and with the city staff is that it's a can do sort of place. The, rea the constraints are, rea are, are also part of the reality though. And, um, based on my, my general um, understanding and study of elections, um, one of the things, there are two things that I've just cautioned about. Th these are the two things I worry about. Um, um, and we can talk about proximity, um, I'll, I'll come back to that. But the two things I'm, I'm most worried about are lines or kind of chaos in the polling places. Um, I mean, we know intuitively our own experiences and we know from the scholarly literature that um, the, the, you know, the thing in a polling place that calls, it, that calls the election into question more than anything else is how long people wait to vote. Um, and that's why in my report, I am conservative with respect to the capacity of the poll pads and the distribution of the poll pads. Um, and why I would urge the um, urge the commission not you know not to bump right up to the poll pads and um, to the constraint and hope for the best um, because that then you know puts you in the position that if one or two of the poll pads fails on election day you really could get a long line um, so that's that's one thing the second thing is that because you don't have a neat you know, association of precincts and districts, right? You have those kind of you know, um, one-offs, fugitive, whatever you want to call them, but frag district fragments. Um, so we have to, we're gonna have to have, I mean, even, I mean, even regardless of how many polling locations there are in the districts, there are um, going to be district fragments. And so, you know, the city is, you know, manually entering in, you know, basically allocating people between the fragments and creating sub districts and working with the state. 
I'm going to be, I mean, they're going to be double checking. I'm going to be um, um, employing my GIS people to double check that work, to make that work. But that has to be absolutely right to get people to the right places in the first place, assuming people read the notifications. Okay. Um, and if that doesn't, if that doesn't work out well, then people are at the wrong polling places. They gum up the lines. Um, you know, they cause problems in polling places. Okay, so those are things I worry about. Now, you raise the issue about people, um, voters being um, um, creatures of habit, and that's absolutely right. And that's one of the things that we've talked, that, you know, that we that the city needs to be in and is planning for. It would be wonderful to be able to um, assign people to the polling places where, say, they voted in the presidential election. Um, but those don't work with respect to having people vote within um, within the municipal districts. Okay, so we start with the fact that um, um, you know if we were to assign people to the exact same polling places, not only would that also blow out the constraint on the poll pads, um, but then there would be imbalances between the districts in terms of of um, access to, to polling places. Um, and so that would bring certain sorts of, you know, inequities or inequalities across, across the city because of this constraint. Um, and so um, it seems to me that the way to deal with the fact that voters are creatures of habit, um, um, the way to do that um, under the current circumstances is, is to have a very aggressive communication strategy um, to work with um, the, the civic groups um, in, in the city in, on top of the official notifications that go out. Um, and also to, you know, to have a really robust educational effort and then also to have the resources in the polling places um, to direct people to the proper places if they end up going, going to the wrong place. Um, and um, you know, if you do those things, um, I think you can have an election that is considered to be fair and a success. Um, it will be harder to pull off um, than if we could have taken another route. Um, and, um, but I'm certain that, um, you know, under these circumstances, um, you know, you can get voters to, to their polling places. They will be, um, you know, and it can be considered to be a, a, fair, a fair election. Um, so, um, but it will take a lot of work, um, of, of, of information, um, um, working with civic groups, um, to get, get them those, to those places. I think the final thing I guess I would say is, um, as I said last week and, and I've said before, and which is absolutely true, when you move a polling place away from a voter, they're less, they're less likely to vote in person. Um, and so there will be, you know, there will be voters, and I and I um, try to quantify that in the report, who will be moved further away from the polling place than, say, they would have voted in the presidential election. Um, those reductions in 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 in-person in voting turnout are on the order of one and two percentage points. Okay, what that research also shows is that when you move a polling place away from people, they're more likely to shift into other modes. Um, and those other modes are mail and in person. So I would also say that um, under the current circumstances, a really important part of this overall plan is aggressively reaching out to voters to vote early, um, either in person or by mail. And I know the city is going is planning on, on sending out a mailer, um, um, notifying people, encouraging people to um, um, to um, ask for mail ballots. Um, I believe that's gonna be, um, I, I'll defer to um, the staff, but I believe that's gonna be postage paid. Um, so people can, from you know, the convenience of their home, um, just request a ballot and, and return it by mail or at a drop box. So in that sense, for you know, the fraction of voters who decide to vote by mail, which could be, um, my guess would be maybe 20% um, of the registered voters, the turnout in the election, you know, for them, it will be a lot more convenient and that could ameliorate some of these um, proximity concerns. Oh, 
but I mean, ultimately, I mean, these are these are value decisions that the commission needs to make, and um, I don't envy you making the decision. Thank you very much, um, Professor Stewart. Um, Jim or Mark, do you have any questions? Uh, I have a couple of comments. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that you know months and months ago we were presented with a plan by the legal department, which had one polling place per district. And now after fire and brimstone or whatever, we have a plan which has five of the districts with only one polling place and three with two. So we haven't really come very far with all this. And secondly, to find out that the uh, binding constraint is the number of poll pads, which the city basically imposed on us by deciding how many they were gonna buy. And next year, you know, we had in presidential elections or in state elections, we've had 14 polling places, which is going to take a lot more than the polling pads, they, poll pads that they bought now. They could have bought them now, and that wouldn't have been a constraint. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, I'm just, you know, disappointed to see that uh, those two things, that we haven't come very far from the one uh, district we were asked by the city council to come up with two. Uh, many of these people on our uh, who are waiting, uh, listening to us, uh, commented in, at meetings that two was necessary. Uh, we've heard organizations, you know, lots of people say, you got to have two per district. And now we're down to five of them with one. And so I don't think we've come very far in the last, I don't know, however long it was, four or five months, or even longer. Um, and, uh, and I realize that uh, Charles Stewart was given the uh, constraints. I mean, when you're given constraints, those are the constraints and you work to solve the problem with those constraints. But uh, there's no reason to impose the constraint on them or the poll pads. I mean, it just, you know, now we're stuck. So that's my comment. Thank you, Thank you um, Jim. So I have a quick, I have a quick question for Elliot. Um, when we ordered the poll pads, because I know that you indicated that we, um, utilize funding to um, purchase poll pads, um, like Jim said, I think three or four or five months ago. Um, how long did it take to, to get and how and were, was that the, um, and how many did we, we purchase at that time? So uh, when I contacted LHS Associates uh, with, uh, and, and the funding came from a grant. So we, we received a grant from uh, the Center for Technology and Civic Life uh, to um, purchase these upgrades. When I contacted Lowell uh, LHS Associates regarding their recommendations, their recommendations was, um, you know, to purchase uh, a polling pad for each precinct plus um, uh, their recommendation was two extra to, um, to ensure coverage. And, and that was their recommendation based on the recommendation they provided all other municipalities. So that you know, based on their recommendation and the recommendation they provided to other municipalities that govern the poll pads that we ordered, uh, which which came to that amount. Yeah, I remember, I thought, I remember you saying that. That's why now that the poll pads are a constraint, that's why I was just, I was confused on that a little bit because I thought that you said that the recommendation was um, three. That's, that's correct. And, and when I contacted LHS Associates about their recommendations on poll pads, one of the things I, I asked was, is like, what's the number you recommend per precinct? And do you recommend extras that we should retain, you know, in the event of an emergency? And their recommendation was one poll pad per precinct plus um, uh, uh, two or three extra to serve as an emergency backup. So, and again, based on, you know, our wards and precincts, we have 33 precincts. So that, that came to you know, and uh, based on their recommendation and the recommendation they give to other municipalities, it was 33 poll plats plus two extra as an emergency backup. So, and so we, so we did not plan on having one extra in each each polling location, which is basically what's in the report. I'm just trying to get to the, why that was enough for us for all our precincts, but it's not enough. Uh, for our municipal election. Well, well part of the that issue seems to be what it is. Right. But part of the issue, Jim, is that typically in an election, it's done by ward and precinct. So I know. Oh, right. I know. So so the poll pad, you can look up voters by ward and precinct within the poll pad. And and again, you know, be, because of the, the issues we have with the census, you know, 
we can't rely on what is what is typically done through a pulp cut. Uh, yeah, I understand that, but our assumption was we need maybe two or three for the city for extras, correct? And uh, yes, what, you know, what Charles do, Stewart's recommending, pull. yeah, and what Charles Stewart's recommending is we have one per polling place extra. That's the difference there. Okay, so we could go back to the original assumption, and that loosens up that constraint considerably. Uh, I, I don't think. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Professor Stewart. I don't. Well, well, I mean, um, that's not. Ex I, I'm suggesting that there be a minimum of two. I, I, there's actually a couple of things to say about this, and, and I'll get back to actually the LH, LHA recommendation because it's it's a problem I've noticed with um, with with basically poll pad vendors nationwide and their recommendation. I think they lowball um, the number of of poll pads they recommend. That having been said, the recommendation for a minimum of 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 two um, only. Um, if you look, you know, when you back in the, back in the tables, ends up being only adding um, one or two poll pads to the whole, um, you, know, you know, situation. That that's one, um, you know, scenario. That, that that's one thing to say. The other thing is that in almost every instance, the two poll pads is necessary. Um, the two poll pads are necessary for the. Um, um, for the, the type of service I think that y'all want to offer to voters when they get to the polling place. Furthermore, then the final thing, and, and I believe this to be true, and we, we need to confirm with the vendor, but one of the way we, we need to have a plan for redirecting people to polling places if they show up at the wrong place. And so it's likely that one of the poll pads will be used frequently basically to look up voters and send them to the correct place. Um, in Understood. a lot of jurisdictions, actually the, 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 actually the, the, the standard would be you deploy however many, many you need to handle the voters. Then you have an extra one on top of that to redirect. Like in Florida, the way that you would, the way that I would be, um, if, if this were in Florida, I would be adding one additional um, poll pad on top of everything that's been recommended here. And, um, so this re is already kind of cutting it, cutting it close. Um, the LHA, I mean, just um, the sort of analysis that I did in here, basically relying on queuing theory and, and kind of go, you know, doing the tedious calculation of how many arrivals do you have and how many poll, poll pads do you need? Um, it's my experience that um, unfortunately, you know, the answer back from LHA should have been, well, tell us how many people you have in your precincts and how long it takes to check them in. And then we'll give you the, um, we'll give you the number. Um, my guess is, um, you know, if they had done that, they might've given you a larger number, but that's water under the bridge at this point. Thank you for that. And um, just one quick question, Elliot, how long does it take if we were to um, order additional poll pads? How long would it take? Um, I'd have to uh, check with LHS associates uh, regarding uh, availability. Um, uh, I, I can't I'd say, oh, I can't say at this point, but uh, I, I believe the solicitor uh, is, is on right now. Yeah, and then um, they, they were unable to join this meeting again, right? LHS? Uh, uh, that, that's correct. Okay, thanks. Um, City Solicitor O'Connor. I, I was just gonna ask um, uh, Elliot, I know that, so on um, uh, Friday of last week after we had spoken to Professor Stewart, we had talked about uh, immediately reaching out to see if there's something more uh, that we could do with respect to poll pads in the event that it um, played into his um, report, um, which uh, which as it turns out, it, it did. So, um, the, um, um, again, the, we haven't had these, this number of, we haven't had these poll pads in the past. The reason that we are even in a position where we have the poll pads is because of the, um, the grant that uh, Elliot had applied for and got, and I, I believe it was one of the more sizable grants um, that it was awarded in the, um, in the state. 
that that's correct. It, it, it was one of the more sizable grants that uh, any municipality in the state was able to get. And we wouldn't have been able to get these pole pads without it. So, so and, and uh, thanks for that. And so um, in any event, um, Elliot, I believe you had uh, followed up with LHS and oh, yeah. there was an option of potentially um, leasing was it like four or six additional pole pads? The, but they are, but they're, they're a fourth generation pole pad or something. The, that is correct. In terms of purchases, uh, they they don't um, have any in stock, but they do have uh, uh, they do have a, a current stock that could be available for lease. But they did warn that these are sort of older generation pole pads. They mentioned that they're sort of four generations down in terms of their technology compare or or their capability. Uh, compared to the pole pads that we have purchased uh, through LHS through the grant. So that's something that we can continue to to take a look at further to see if if it's um, you know if it's desirable to have um, older generation pole pads or if it ends up um, posing risks in terms of malfunctions um, with the older pole pads. But the um, at least in terms of leasing the pole pads, we would have. Um, some additional time before the before the general election. However, you know, as we all know, time is uh, one hundred percent at this point. Time is of the essence, and I think uh, the commissioner had talked about that delicate balance between trying to do as um, as good as um, can be done um, and um, um, and also being mindful of the need to be able to give individuals time to um, um, to get that message out and to be able to work with other groups in getting that message out. Thank you. Um, Mark, is there anything you would like to add or say? No, I don't think so. Okay. Wow. Um, okay, so I'm not, I don't. So the recommendation, um, Professor Stewart in the end was to reconsider our motion from last week. That's what your recommendation, your final recommendation was for your from your analysis. Just wanted to verify. Um, yes. I'm not comfortable in doing that. Since we don't have the minutes, could you remind us of what the motion was, please? Yeah, I found them. They were sent out like two or three hours before the meeting, Jim. I just found them. No, not not this one. Not the last meeting. Oh, okay. Elliot, can you remind us of the minute? I mean, of the of the motion. Well, the the vote from the last meeting was sort of an an an, an initial vote of potential polling locations relative to, you know, those districts that um, had a preliminary, but. Um, you know, I, I would note that, uh, you know, a, a final decision relative to, you know, what your polling locations uh, are going to be, I think, uh, you know, it was still open, especially in light of, you know, Professor Stewart's analysis uh, and, and report, which has just been submitted. So, um, you know, while polling locations were identified, um, the, the Election Commission, I think, has, has yet to make a final decision as to, again, what your polling locations are going to be for each district and, um, you know, what it finally is going to be, you know, moving forward for the preliminary and general election. Which is, uh, again, now reflect, oh, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, solicitor. If, if I may, 
Yes. Yes. So I was just going to say the um, um, my understanding, at least, is the there hadn't been any formal um, 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 splitting of the uh, of the districts to date. So I'm not I'm not necessarily clear in terms of revisiting. Um, I know that last last meeting, obviously, the commission had um, voted on all of the polling locations, everything that would be acceptable, acceptably identified as a polling location. And then we had also engaged um, Professor Stewart to assist and guide in terms of recommendations with respect to the eight districts and 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 which to split and where and how. Um, and um, so um, that's my understanding, at least, of, of what, of where things were. I, I agree, Madam Chairman. We have not decided on splitting oh. districts and right. just in general what the uh, locations are. Okay. So does somebody want to make a motion? To, to what? Splitting the districts? The motion to what now, please? To to agree on filling the districts and to also just um, to identify the polling locations so we can move forward. So you want to move to adopt the report? Is that what you're saying? Yes, we have to move to adopt the report. However, um, I would still want us to have the multiple polling locations in each of the districts. Well, that, that's two different things. <clears throat> Uh, my personally, I would. Let, we heard from a lot of people the last time we had a proposal, and uh, most of them upset, including the uh, city council. And I'd like to hear from people about this one, and maybe vote on it next Tuesday. Um, I mean, that may that's pushing it out a little bit more, but you know, we have a lot of constituents who feel the same way you do. And if we're going to change the report then we need to vote to change it before we adopt the report. It's kind of complicated, I guess, a little bit fuzzy, but you know, we can't adopt the report and then say we're going to do something else. We could, I mean, we could we adopt the report and then we change the report, but <laughs> that, gets, that gets a little crazy. Did anybody sign up to speak, um, um, Elliot? No, there were no registered speakers. Um, if, if I may, um, in, in just a little bit on, on and the solicitor will have an opinion about this as well. If I could um, suggest that the action to be taken is to is not to adopt the report or not, but to adopt a recommendation um, of you know splitting the districts in particular ways. So, for instance, if you wanted. Um, to adopt my recommendation, then it would be some version of, you know, the summary of the you know, just adopting, you know, the language of that of that recommendation. It would also seem to me that that um, that motion would also specify which, um, um, you know, which precincts would be associated with each polling place, um, which you know we can whatever is the will of the. Of the commission, we can, you know, you know working with the um, with the city, we can come up with that with that mapping to be absolutely certain that we have accounted for every, you know, every every precinct frag fragment. I uh, point out I've read the report, and, and there's several places in there where he's very specific. He says it's up to the commission. Now, his report is a recommendation, and uh, for example, District Four. Lowell High School and either Rogers or Greenhouse. So we have to make decisions on these things. And uh, so he's recommending, uh, we have to go through this and decide what we actually want to do and make the final decisions. So just adopting, we can accept his report, but you know, adopting his report really doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um... Uh, the, uh, the solicitor. Uh, which is speak. Yes. And, and I just wanted to add on to that. The um, 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 Commissioner Pope is, um, is obviously 
100 percent correct. These are just um, these are you know recommendations from the um, uh, from the expert, but ultimately the de the decisions are and and um, and remain with the um, the election commission. Um, I know I know uh, Commissioner Pope had referred to it as a law department plan. Um, it was never a law department plan. Um, actually, I wasn't even at that meeting when um, when these uh, when it was presented. I hadn't. Uh, I've just joined it after the uh, after the fact. Historically, the law department has never ever been involved in um, in any of these types of issues other than just a reviewing of polling locations to make sure that they comply with the Massachusetts general laws, which, um, you know, in recent years, that just hasn't been an issue, but, but in the not so distant past, um, it was. And so all of that is to say that, that all of these decisions do, um, you know, ultimately rest with the, um, with the commission and, um, and whether it's been assistance from the law department, assistance from Professor Stewart, um, uh, this has been brought um, in an attempt to uh, to help in whatever way whatever way we can. Okay, so if I understand correctly, um, we can adopt the professor's recommendation, um, and then what I want us to accomplish tonight, um, commission commissioners, um, I want us to formally. Um, adopt a plan to split the district so that that's the plan. And then I want us to also formally um, ad adopt a plan as to which um, polling locations we want to utilize. I want to I want to do that today, if you guys agree. I want us to complete that so that we can get the ball rolling and that we have a plan in place and we can start um, managing the different issues that may or may not come up for that. Well, I will move that we accept the report um, with one typo, which I've mentioned it to uh, Dr. Stewart on page six. So 95 gets changed to five, but we accept the report. That's my motion. Okay, um, I'll second that. Okay, uh, motion to accept the report from Commissioner Pope, seconded by uh, uh, Chair Zviku. All those in favor, uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, the report is accepted. Uh, yeah, with that one change, you know, which I emailed you about, so. Right, with, with the type of correction. Right. Okay, so. Go ahead. What would you like us to do next? So the next thing I would like us to um, to tackle would be um, hmm. voting on uh, on the polling locations themselves, splitting the district and voting on the polling locations on the record so that we can move forward. Well, first we need to do the splitting so we know where the split is, and then uh, the polling locations to get them with, you know, within the splits. So, but are we going to go with five with only one, one polling place, and not split them? We are going to split them. We have to sit down and decide where we're going to split them and how we're going to split them. I think we've done the legwork already, and I would like to um, take into consideration the recommendations from um, the professor when we did this last week. Um, so, Elliot, can you pull up the the map? Yes. <laughs> I think you're on mute. Apologies, you mean share screen the, the map? Yes, please. Uh. 
okay. Elliot, do you have the notes from last week? Since we don't have them in front of us, we got, we've actually done this exercise already. Uh, I don't have uh, uh, the notes uh, from if, the meeting last week. Um, if if if, um, if I if I may, I believe on page eleven of my report, I've indicated the precincts. Um, I believe that should be um, assigned under my plan, but they were based on the notes that I took from last week's. Okay, let me pull. Um, Ellie, can you pull up the plan, please? Uh, page 11, yep. Okay, so I have um, uh, page uh, 11. So, um, and this is uh, from uh, Professor Stewart's uh, report. So this is page 11. So um, I can start, I can go by districts. Uh, okay. Zoe, you can you just want? share the screen. You can share the screen with that. Okay, um, let's see if I can. Uh, starting on page uh, 11. Mm -hmm. So for um, District 1, uh, the recommendation was um, uh, two locations, uh, Pawtucketville Memorial and McAvenue School. Uh, and uh, Professor's recommendations was precinct 6-2 and 6-3 to Pawtucket and McAvenue um, uh, I believe those uh, re remaining districts and dis uh, those remaining precincts in, in uh, District 1 would go to McAvenue. And then District 2? Uh, District 2, the recommendation is that uh, you have the Robinson as your polling location and 919293, 5-2, and, and those portions of 5-2 and 5-3 that are District 2 would go to Robinson. Wait, yeah, let's do 1 through 4, and then we'll tackle 5 through 8 after. OK, 1 through 4, OK. So. Uh, for District 3, the recommendation is that the Riley uh, will be the polling location and the precincts that will be assigned to it are 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, 11 uh, portions of 11-2 and 11-3. And for District 4, uh, the recommendation is uh, Lowell High School as uh, a polling location and then either the Rogers School or the Green Helge Elementary School as your second polling location. Uh, and the scenarios for which are outlined below, scenario A for Rogers and scenario B for Green Helge. Okay. Um, commissioners, any um, questions or comments on this? Um, we're going to adopt this we have to decide scenario a or b first yeah so um i know we had a little bit of a discussion at, um, on this last week um i don't see it i don't see um, a scenario c that includes all of them that includes lowell high rogers 
and greenhouse, right? No, but we can add one if we want. I have one yeah. question. Go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Yes. If you're gonna add a third to a district four and we're already at maximum for the pole pads, where are we gonna get the pole pads for the extra or polling place? Or am I naive and I just don't know what, how this all works? Ellie, you, you can take that one. <laughs> well, um, it's a very good question, Commissioner. Um, you know, and I, I think it, it may be helpful uh, at, at this stage, you know, uh, to uh, ask Professor Stewart sort of what, what the rationale uh, in his report was and, and sort of explain the report relative to District 4. Uh, I, I think it might be, uh, uh, that might be helpful at this point. Um, right. Right. Um, so a couple of just a couple of things to um, <clears throat> I know it's a long and complicated report. I actually address the third polling places um, <clears throat> for both District 3 and District 4 in the report. Um, and um, the um, District 4 is um, <clears throat> Actually, let me, I'm going to pull up. Would you like me to uh, go to the page in your report, Professor, or would you like that? Um, I'm good. I'm, what I'm trying to do is um, come up with the number of polling places, which I'm rather poll pads. Um, but the, in the text itself, we start, um, Uh, what happens when you're, yeah, it's on page seven. It, would, um, it, would it be easier, Professor, if, um, if um, Elliot um, allowed you to be a, um, um, to co-monitor the uh, screen? Um, no, if I can just give me, give me just a second. Okay, um, sure thing. Yep. I'll come back to this. Um, okay. I just want to make sure. Um, so the, the, there's two issues. One, one is that of, of, um, of proximity and of, um, and, and of the poll pads. The proximity issue, which I discuss in the report, um, is that um, um, District 4 is already um, um, a fairly compact district to begin with, and dividing it into thirds makes it a very, very compact set of subdistricts. Um, and so, um, it, and it does um, kind of put it out of whack with respect to the rest of the city. Um, now, I understand the reason why the, the commission was interested in this. It had to do with the, the barrier provided by the Merrimack River and the construction, the southbound, I guess the closing of the southbound lane over the over the bridge to the south. So there are obstructions. I've looked at the detours um, for the, um, um, you know, for the construction and, you know, the bridges getting over um, from the north to the south. And, um, you know, even with those considerations, you know, the travel distances in four are still, you know, much less than in most other of the, of the districts. So that's one concern was that by dividing into three, you've now created three sub-districts that are really kind of tiny with respect to um, respect to distances. And then one has to ask why these districts and not others get to be that um, within walking distance. Um, the second issue has to do with additional pole pads. And um, I'll just um, point out here, so at the adding of a third polling place to district three and four would require many more poll pads. Um, and um, basically the issue is that um, for any, you know, again, because we want to have two poll pads in every polling locations for the reasons I stated earlier, then, um, you know, for one, for a group of, of um, 
voters that could, but we basically need two more poll pads in order to have the third third location. Um, and um, so those are my considerations. Again, it's not my decision to make, but I just wanted you all to be aware of, um, um, you know, just the, the size and the poll pad. And I, I will fi finally um, just remind um, we started with um, in dividing in half the conversations that seemed to me started with green halls and then the and then the southern part of the district came into play. Thank you, um, Professor Stewart. Um, commissioners, what do you what do you think? Well, I still think you're going to have a lot of upset people at having so few polling places, but depends on whether or not we're willing to accept the abuse, or I shouldn't say the abuse, the criticism. <laughs> um, scenario. A or scenario B? Uh, let's go back. Um, A. What is scenario A? Law uh, High School. Right, oh, right school. Oh, I see it now. Low High and Rogers. And then scenario B is Low High and Green Ouch. Yeah, I recommend we do A. I would say A also. Okay, well, that's one decision. I would agree with that. <laughs> All right, so. One, um, district one, two, three, and four are now accounted for. Um, Elliot, did you want to continue with um, district five through eight? Certainly. Uh, for District 5, it would be the Butler School, and the precincts that would be assigned to it are 4-3, uh, 8-2, 10-1, 10-2, 11-1, 11-2, 11-3. Moving to District 6. Yes, please. For District 6, that would be the Maury School. And uh, assigned to it would be Precincts 32, 33, 41, 42, 43, 73, 82, 83, 10, 1. For District 7, the polling location would be the Senior Center. Assigned to it would be precincts 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, 3-2, 3-2, 3-3, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 3-4, 
uh, with the charter school, but LDS, um, LDS cannot be used as a location. Yeah. So it would be the most likely the charter school then if it's for the second location. If, if they, uh, if they uh, uh, permit it and, and are interested in it. Um, I, I, I do know that um, uh, we do have, uh, uh, you know, another uh, pre-existing polling location in eight, but, you know, uh, the hope is that um, the, uh, you know, the, the charter school will um, uh, uh, be available and interested in participating in elections this year. And again, I am, I, I am in direct communication with uh, the director of the charter school. Um, and we've had, we've been having uh, communications back and forth on that. Thank you, because but because the existing polling location, which is the Bailey, just doesn't make sense. To... Right, it's right next to the Bailey. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. So, any do um, so you guys have any other discussion on on the um, the splitting of the districts, Mark or Jim? So you want to. Want to move ahead and accept this as the uh, way we split the districts? Yes. With five, with one location, and three with two locations. Correct. For the preliminary. Yes. <laughs> because if we, if we if we can we can attach that um, and then come back for the you know that's also an option. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that the poll pads are going to uh, push us into a corner on this. Um, well, we don't know the um, the time the timeline as of right now. Elliot's going to reach out to LHS, and maybe one of these days they'll probably join the call. But if not, he'll get the information uh, um, for us. And then I guess the I guess we have fourth generation or third generation poll pads. We're going to find out. Uh, and I don't, and I, like, I think your last report indicated that we didn't complete, we didn't spend all of that grant either, right? Elliot, we still have monies left? Uh, no, the, the grant has been expended. exhausted. Uh, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the grant had to be used uh, uh, to June uh, 30th. So we used what we could and then uh, the grant has ended. So uh, there are no more grant, there's no more grant funding available. So did we did we did we utilize all of the funds, or did we leave money on the table? There was um, there were some funds that we couldn't expend uh, by the time the grant ended, but we expended what we could uh, of the grant. Okay. Uh, point on that too: if we lease some of the older ones, we can use those as the backups. We don't have to have them on the front line. So um, that kind of doesn't eliminate, but it uh, diminishes the probability that the older ones will cause a problem. Um, Solicitor Christine, please. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So as far as the funding, um, I wouldn't anticipate that's going to be a problem um, at, at the city's end. Um, you know, certainly the manager would support all efforts um, in this regard, and um, and I think, frankly, there's also probably a distinct possibility that some of the money that will um, that would be expended on this election may very well qualify for um, under uh, COVID relief spending, um, simply because part of the reason that, um, well, the, the major thrust of, of um, why we're dealing with these things is the lack of census, which, which also ties into all of this as well. So the bottom line is um, the, the issue really isn't a, a problem of funding so much as just uh, timing and, um, um, so uh, I'm sure Elliot will continue to work with um, LHS on this issue. Um, they did, I think, mention, I, my recollection from um, an update from Elliot was that I think some of these things are um, running slow from Apple. Uh, was that it, Elliot? Or that, That's correct. LHS did warn that um, you know, there are sort of supply holdups in terms of uh, obtaining new poll pads due to you know issues regarding getting the iPads from Apple and, and 
you know, I, I think part of this can be connected to, you know, the semiconductor sort shortage that you know, sort of the world is facing right now, you know, as, uh, you know, due to, you know, uh, due to sort of uh, COVID and, you know, supply chains and things like that. So LHS did, did caution us about how that, that could be an, an issue. How long did it take us to get the first set? I don't think that that question was answered. Um, the the first set is currently uh, at LHS. It, it did take, I believe, um, uh, I, I think uh, I, I can double check with LHS, but they they had those uh, sort of on hand. Uh, so when we purchased it, and um, so, but they said they currently don't have uh, additional pole pads uh, for purchase. They'd have to get them from uh, suppliers, and and uh, you know that's why they cautioned that. Um, you know, keep that in mind that uh, if, if they were to, if we were to purchase new ones, we'd have to take that into account, you know, the, you know, logistical issues and supply issues on Apple's part. So, so basically it was a quick turnaround because they had them in stock. That's correct. Uh, uh, but when, when I made the initial purchase. And this was the initial purchase with the grant funding of, of the poll pads. Jim, do you want to, any, you know? Well, <clears throat> as I say, it looks like we're kind of in a corner on that. So um, I would uh, move that we uh, accept the um, locations on page 11, subject to the okay, acquisition of more poll pads, which would allow us to divide more of the districts. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay. Okay. And I think that'll get us at least through the preliminary. Yeah, we don't want to get in a place where we say we're going to do something and we can't. All right. Okay, because then we're stuck. We say we'll do this, and if we can get some more poll pads, then we'll revisit and divide. Okay. And Mark, what, what do you think? So that was a form of a motion? Yes. Except, and I'll second it. Okay, uh, so we have a motion to um, accept the, um, uh, to, to designate the polling locations as indicated on page 11 uh, as the polling locations for the city of Lowell for the municipal elections. Uh, one small point was scenario A. Scenario A for, for district four. Um, all right, uh, that is the motion from uh, Jim, seconded by Mark. Um, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, uh, the motion passes. <coughs> okay. Um, next item on the agenda, I think we have to still approve those minutes. Uh, the, the second, uh, the last item on the agenda is item 3C. Uh, and this is uh, regarding discussion of early, early in-person voting hours and locations for 2021 preliminary election and a vote may be taken to establish such hours and locations. Okay, so what was your recommendation last week? for this? Um, as indicated um, in uh, Professor Stewart's report, um, there has to be a centralized polling location, and this is under state law. So state law requires that a centralized uh, early in-person voting location be designated in the city. Um, it, it would, uh, again, based on our prior experience, especially with last year's election and the fact that the Lowell Senior Center was a successful early in-person voting location. I'd recommend that the Lowell Senior Center be designated as a, um, you know, as the centralized early voting polling location uh, for the preliminary and uh, the municipal election. So move. Second. Okay, I have a, well, uh, 
before you get the motion, the, the question now is if you want to use the Lowell Senior Center as a centralized polling location, what are your hours and, and times uh, and days that you want to, to do as, an, uh, as a polling location? You made a recommendation on this last week and, and to be consistent with what we did last year and we said that's fine. Okay, so uh, last year, uh, the way we did it was it was uh, seven days of uh, early in-person voting. So it would start the weekend prior to the weekend before the election. So, you know, by way of reference, uh, let me just pull up the calendar. So with the preliminary election being on September 21st, if we, if we go by the way we did early in-person voting last year, early in-person voting would start on September 11th, uh, which is a Saturday. It would proceed into uh, Sunday, September 12th. Mm -hmm. And the hours that we would do that would be the same as the hours we did uh, last year, which would be from nine to three. And then uh, from Monday through Friday, which would be September 13th through September 17th, that would be early in-person voting at the senior center during the hours in which city hall is open. So Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, would, it would be uh, early in-person voting would be available from eight o'clock in the morning until uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. On Tuesdays, it would be available from eight o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night. And Fridays, it would be available from eight o'clock in the morning until noon. So that's, that's how we did early voting uh, last year. It was seven days of early voting starting the weekend prior to the election. So, and again, that was, that was last year. So, uh, 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 Chair, I believe Professor Stewart uh, wishes. Oh, speak. yes, Professor Stewart. And I, I would just remind, um, remind you all that my recommendation was that you all take advantage of the full 10 days. Um, and, um, you know, extend out the hours, you know, analogously um, during the weekday, um, 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 in part to, you know, ameliorate these um, distance concerns. Um, but in any case, you have 10 days and um, why not take them? So. Thank you. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Chair, the city solicitor, please. Yes. I, I would just um, uh, just to echo that um, that was also the the um, the special legislation that was filed um, by the uh, by the city and adopted by the city council was um, intended to um, to to take advantage of the full the full ten days, and so um, um, the um, uh, the council I think very much wants to see the city have the full ten days, and that's and that's consistent with what we've done in the past as well. So uh, uh, thank you, and and with the so with the additional uh, uh, three days on top of the the seven, that would take us to early voting for the preliminary election starting September eighth, which is a Wednesday. And uh, if the uh, commission would like, um, I think it, I think it would be helpful for consistency's sake to have the additional three days of early voting starting Wednesday be consistent with the hours that we would have on the weekdays the following week. So you would use standard city hall hours. So Wednesday and Thursday would be from eight o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night. And Friday would be from eight to noon. So it's consistent with early voting, um, uh, early voting the following week. So, and again, so that uh, with the 10 days, it would start uh, September 8th and go through until um, Friday, September 17th. Okay, but we have uh, daytime hours in the weekends, correct? I mean, That's correct. Hours, it would okay. be, on the weekend, it would be from nine o'clock uh, in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. And, and okay. that's consistent with how we did it uh, <laughs> last year. And then uh, if I may, commissioners, uh, moving forward to the November election, uh, I can also uh, get the, the 10 days of early voting uh, there as well. Yeah. So um, with uh, the election in November being November 2nd, uh, early voting would, uh, the 10 days of early voting would start October 20th. So that would be Wednesday, October 20th, going through to um, uh, Friday, October 29th. 
And that would include, again, uh, a weekend of early in-person voting at the centralized location at the Lowell Senior Center from uh, Saturday, October 23rd to Sunday, October 24th. Again, uh, the hours would be uh, consistent with the hours for in-person early voting for the preliminary. So again, uh, hours in which City Hall is open on weekdays and nine to three on weekends. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, I, we can make that motion. So move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, motion from from Jim, uh, seconded by Zoe uh, yep. on those hours and dates. Um, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, no opposition. That motion passes. So um, so that that's for the centralized polling location. Um, I'll note uh, that Professor Stewart. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chair. Mark, um, did you did you have a question? No. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry, go ahead, Elliot. Um, Professor Stewart also had a, uh, a recommendation regarding um, uh, sort of, uh, how do you put it, uh, like cycle, uh, uh, like an, a, a, an additional early voting polling location within each of the districts. Um, and and uh, so for the preliminary, you would hold uh, sort of a satellite location within uh, each of the districts itself uh, to, to accommodate voters uh, as well, so. And which, which one is the satellite location? I know that we talked about this last week, so what did... Um, I, I'm, we can still look at, uh, I can, I'm gonna contact the school department and, and see if we can use uh, the schools as a uh, alternative polling location. Um, and we can also um, uh, see if there are, uh, you know, additional locations within um, each, each, of the, each of the districts that, that we can employ. Um, you know, again, uh, within the district itself as that satellite early in-person voting location. Right. So I think we, we talked about this last week. We said that let's utilize the, the schools, right? Um, and you said you were going to look into that. So yes, uh, I, am, I, I am looking into that uh, still with the school department to see if there are, um, you know, if we can reserve spaces within the schools, uh, you know, uh, for days for early voting. Part of the issue is that they can't cancel school for those early in-person days. So to the extent we can use it, we'd have to reserve a space within the school. Um, alternatively, there may be uh, other locations I'm looking into um, that could serve as a polling location. I recall that in 16, uh, the Cambodian Mutual Assistance Association uh, had uh, a space in their offices available that we used for uh, early in-person voting during that satellite location. Uh, I, I'll, I'll certainly- CBA. Go. Yeah, the CMMA. CMMA, um, CBA. Right. Uh, potentially, there could be other community partners that may be interested in hosting uh, early in-person voting at a time, uh, uh, perhaps, and, and it will certainly be dependent on within each district. So um, uh, we can certainly, uh, I can certainly look at that and, and see if I can confirm uh, dates and times uh, for uh, each district for that satellite location. Um, for the preliminary, it would be, again, districts two, three, uh, four, and seven. And then for um, the uh, final municipal election in November, it would be one for uh, each district. So, um, you know, again, as a satellite location, it'd be one location that exists within each of the districts. Okay, can we make that um, an agenda item for next Tuesday to have an update as to where the, um, the satellite locations are? Because um, based on, you know, the recommendations of Professor Stewart, like we want to take advantage of the early voting as much as possible. So we do want to have those locations available since we're not going to be, since we don't have the multiple, um, we, don't, we didn't split all of the districts. So we want that available. 
Definitely. I will, um, I will reach out and I will find uh, locations that can serve as satellite locations uh, for each of the districts. Uh, priority at this point will be given to those districts that will have a preliminary. So I will look into two, three, four, and seven to find uh, where uh, we can locate a satellite location for in-person early voting. I think we should actually expand that to all eight districts so that we can already have the, um, the places at hand and we know exactly where they're going for the um for the other for the other um election as well. So okay. I wouldn't just limit it to the four. I would limit it, I would um just get the information for all eight. Okay. 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 I'll work on that. I'll make sure that uh, by the uh, next uh, meeting on Tuesday, we'll we'll have, or, or uh, we will we'll have um, satellite locations identified. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else on this line item? All right, great. We can go back to the first. Okay, moving uh, back to item 2A. Yes, uh, please. Yep. Uh, vote to accept prior meeting minutes. So move. Second. Okay, motion from Commissioner Pope, seconded by uh, Chairman Zaniku. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Uh, hearing none, the motion passes. And uh, that is the agenda for the evening. Okay, Madam Chairman, um, before we adjourn, um, we did accept uh, Charles Stewart's report, which means it is part of the proceedings of this meeting. So it needs to be included in the minutes that are posted online with our minutes. And it also now becomes a public document. So prior to the meeting, why we had to keep it to ourselves, but it's a public document now anybody would like to see it okay thank you for outlining that jim okay so motion to adjourn before we adjourn uh motion to adjourn by uh chairman Zaniku, seconded by the commissioner pope uh all those in favor please indicate by saying aye aye uh, no opposed uh, hearing that the motion is uh, the uh, meeting is adjourned at uh, 7 29 p.m I have another one at 7.30. <laughs> and no supper yet. <laughs> oh, I suffer so much. Uh, okay. Good evening, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.